Hey, hey, it's Mr. A, back at you with another Snowed In special. Here we are, uh, I'm in Chicago, and uh, it's pretty cold outside. So today I figured we'd get started with some pretty chilly artwork. So today I have some things set up. Uh, I brought my ruler. It's also, oh, check it out, my new custom laser cut uh, 30, 60, 90 square tool. All right, and um, pencil, some tape, uh, and then I don't know if you can see here, these are my gouache colors now gouache is like a almost like watercolor but uh it's almost these are like actually um acrylic so they'll dry without having to like remix in so if you've ever tried traditional ones uh you can certainly um be frustrated if they reactivate so what i'm going to do is put those aside for now um same thing with my brushes and we're first going to set up our paper so we have a set boundary. Um, so this piece of paper is actually Bristol board. Uh, it's kind of a little heavier cardstock paper, uh, but I like it for doing quick illustrations like this. And uh, right now I think my piece of paper is about 10 by 9, so not perfectly square here, but we're going to set up a boundary and I'll be honest, like usually I never had the discipline to do this when I was younger, uh, but it is a good habit to get into deciding how big you want your sketch to be, especially if you have a nice piece of paper. Let's center that thing on here. Now, one quick way to find the center of a piece of paper is if you go from edge to edge with a ruler. Now, this isn't quite long enough, but I'm going to lightly mark an X right here, almost like a ghost line. Okay. And we're gonna mark between each corner. And there's just, nice thing is, is that X represents the center of our piece of paper. Now what we need to do though, is take a boundary um, from that. And when I have a right angle tool like this, um, I can line it up through the edge and I can find halfway down between here. If I go right through, I'll lightly draw a line in. If it goes through that X, it'll give me the midpoint between the sides. Same thing over here. These are all super light. If you have like your own sketching pencils, use like the, um, what do you call it? 6H or 4H. The harder pencils are going to give you a much lighter result. Okay, but those lines are going to help me figure out how big my painting rectangle is going to be. So I want to make mine about, uh, let's say, five by seven. Now, it might seem a little strange, but let's try to measure um, about seven inches away. Well, if let's see, five divided by two is two and a half. Um, so I'm on this line, I'm going to put my two and a half mark right on the center, and I'm going to Go up to five, okay? And then let's make it seven tall. So from the center, seven divided by two is 3.5. So there's my three and a half mark right here. And let's mark at each end. Now, why am I doing it on the center lines? Well, I need to be able to guarantee that I have a right angle um, coming away from those. So when I use the right angle tool, I can line it up with both lines. And I'm just going to create a line here. Um, and one here. And being sure to line it up over here. The nice thing about this is like, with this thing right here, I can extend both of those lines because this angle is going to be a right angle right here. So let's extend those out. And we'll extend this one. And then using this line, I can line up with this measurement mark. And 
let's do it one last time over here. That looks pretty good. I'm just gonna lighten those things up with my eraser. Because remember, we're gonna be painting over this again, but by the end of this, we can actually tape this thing down and we'll be sure that there's really nothing going on. Especially when you're doing painting, you're expecting to get it done quickly. Don't have to make your drawing area too huge, but I'm just gonna lighten those up. All right. Now these marks can also help when we're laying out the artwork. I really want to create a pretty much centered piece of work, but you also can think about um, dividing your canvas up into thirds to make all the interesting things line up just about there. Now, I'm gonna eyeball this, but if I could div divide up this side by thirds, it would probably be about here and here. So if I just kind of create a line down And this would fall under like composition. We want to just like make sure the eye is going to the most interesting parts. And the rule of thirds is a good way to um, divide up your canvas. Not perfect, it should go over a little bit, but let's try the other side. You could do this mathematically, but not in the mood. School is out. I'm not trying to impress anyone right now. Uh, let's put those lines in. And the reason I do this is so when we lay out our design, you can use those guide points where these rules of third intersect to help you plan out your space. So this area right here, here, and here, those intersections are gonna be the most interesting parts of our sketch. So when we lay some things out and we're deciding when we sketch it in with pencil where to put everything in this picture, we can make a pretty informed um, decision on where to put it. So I'm gonna go over to my list right here. Um, I'm gonna be sketching this thing out. I did the boundary. Uh, and when I start the sketch, we're gonna think about the foreground, middle ground, and background. For this sketch, my plan is to have a snowman, uh, a little bit of like a ribbon or what was gonna look like a scarf down here. So we're gonna have to decide where the snowman's gonna be. And then I want them to kind of be making like a peace sign or something like this. Um, so let's start to think about how we can lay this out that it's gonna be the most interesting. So uh, let's loosely sketch in where you think, I'm gonna pick this top left intersection here to sketch in where I think snowman's head's gonna be. Notice I'm doing it super light. Uh, and let's make the bottom of the snowman right here. So let's make that ball a little bigger. Remember, we're gonna paint over this, so there's no big deal of, um, you know, even if you do draw a little bit darker, it's no big deal. And then I'm gonna put a ball right in between. All right. Now, let's say that I want this guy, uh, his arm then is gonna to have to come out here, and he's gonna to have to make the peace sign like that. I feel like he's still, I can make him a little bigger. Maybe that would, help it so it wouldn't look like his arm is reaching all the way over. And yeah, that's looking more like it. A little bit more realistic reach on his arm. And let's see, he's probably gonna have a hat. And what else? Okay, well, we got the general things laid out. Uh, I do wanna have some sort of like scarf thing saying chill out. So I'm gonna block this in, it's gonna overlap. So this would be the foreground, something that's in front of us. Okay, now probably have to do a tutorial on this stuff, but it's gonna be basically like a rectangle to the side. We chill and then it's gonna zip down a little bit and I'll go here so that the out part of it will come across right at this intersection. 
I need to make this a little longer or I can just bring it down a little bit more. Can you see how that comes together? Like a roller coaster. So it's like a scarf blowing in the wind. All right. Now we got the foreground. Foreground is anything that's like the first thing that we see that's closest to us as the viewer. Then the middle ground is gonna be the snowman himself um, and any detail that flows there. And then the background, what do we see far back? Now, usually if you do like a perspective drawing, remember like the horizon line is about halfway down. Um, well, the interesting thing here is let's say the horizon is at that halfway point. Let's just make it easier though. We'll add some kind of like rolling hills in the background. Okay, and um, we're also gonna just draw some triangles in the back to like one thing you could do is just do some smaller triangles in back. You're not gonna draw each tree, but then we can also put maybe a tree right here. So it follows and emphasizes that Thing, that uh, what do you call it you know peace sign that he's doing uh, and then what about his other arm I'm gonna have it come back down and point towards this intersection um, and what can we have pointing up this way hmm maybe I'll put uh, what could I do I don't know we'll think about that maybe a sled or something but I have a tree back here to fill some space um, and that tree line, we'll talk about that later. Uh, and let's add maybe like a moon over here for a cloud that can go behind him. Remember, as things get farther away, they get smaller. So I'm doing two things to make this look legit is they're having, um, we're overlapping, doing the foreground, middle ground, and background pieces. Um, we're also creating a sense of depth by making things smaller as they go away. So these trees in the background that I made, those are smaller technically, they're just farther away. Um, but I think this is good enough to get me going here. So I'm gonna more sketch in some more details. So first, let's take a look at the snowman itself. I have these spheres, but overlap is important here. So here's the ball. I'm going to turn off the alarm here. And notice that this ball is sitting on top of the other one. So instead of drawing this line, I'm actually going to erase that so I don't get confused. And I'm going to just draw this one in. They don't have to be perfect circles. But rounding out at the bottom is important. Okay, same thing. I'm going to erase some of those details in here. So I can see which one is on top. And it's overlapping with that scarf that I made. So I'm going to cut that some slack and get out of its way. So some of these sketching lines you can erase. I can't find my big eraser, so bear with me. But we're completing the look of overlap. So using your eraser as a drawing tool is important here. All right. Deciding where stuff goes here. Um, so let's take a look at next steps here. So I'm going to outline this, give it a better shape. Okay. I want it to look like it's curving behind, so this needs to be trimmed up. I'm not going to draw here, but I'm going to pretend like I did. There's my scarf unwinding. But I need to adjust. See how it gets thicker on this side than it is over here? Technically, we need to trim that down a little bit. Trim this out. So 
so last night, the storm, I got an email at like midnight saying, oh, we'll let you know by 5.30 in the morning if school's gonna be in session. And uh, I woke up at five, but I was like still dreaming almost. So I was like, <laughs> I went back to sleep and had a dream that I actually had to go into school to teach today. And I woke up all scared, but luckily <laughs> I was right, no school. All right, so here we go. Um, doesn't that look a little bit more clean? We fixed how thick this stuff was. I'm just gonna leave this as an end right here. But then I'm gonna draw a light line here that follows the curve. Okay. And I'm gonna need to draw my letters in there. I'm gonna take a break from the scarf though. But notice how I'm creating the height for the letters there. Um, all right, how about his face? Well, I don't want to draw it straight on like this, okay? Because I look kind of awkward. I'm gonna have him looking slightly to the side. I'm gonna clean up some of the lines that I would put on there. And I'm gonna almost turn it. So if you can think of like, almost like a pumpkin, you know how they have those round parts uh, that separate them? That's gonna be my center of the face. This is about halfway down. So I'm gonna put two lumps of coal here. And then I'm gonna put my carrot. It's gonna be right out here. But a slightly, instead of a, just a triangle, I'm gonna round it out because it's round where it sticks into there. Okay. And then I'm gonna do pieces of coal for his mouth following kind of that mark. Eh, that seems okay for now. Um, and then how about this hat? Well, right now it looks like it's gonna fall off of his head. So I'm actually gonna bring this down. It'd have to be a pretty big top hat <laughs> in order to fit because I wanna see like where it actually touches there. It might be a little hard to see from where you're at, but I'm gonna give it a little bit more slouch to it. Because I don't think anyone's putting a brand new hat on this guy. They're leaving him out in the cold. Erase a little bit. One thing to, it's a harder said than, or sorry, easier said than done for a lot of you out there. Let go, don't get too hung up on your details. Again, remember, we're painting over this later. But to give some round shape to this hat, that band that usually goes around like a top hat, we're gonna make sure that's round, and then I know, I'm gonna need to round this out a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Notice I'm not really shading anything in. Shading, if you're gonna paint, is actually kind of annoying. Think of it as like making a coloring book for yourself. Um, I do still think there's something awkward down here. A lot of open space on this side. But let's, let's think about what we can do with that. Uh, all right, so let's work on the hand sign. Well, first off, it's made out of a stick, right? So we don't have to have a perfect hand, which is kind of nice, okay? Uh, two fingers down, two fingers up, and then the thumb across. I'm gonna focus on getting these two first. It can be a little bit bigger, remember? And then the thumb goes over, right? And then we have two down like that, okay? But remember, it has to all come together like as a stick. So we can work on that when we paint, but maybe you wanna make this a little bit. Thicker, I don't know. All those sticks come together. Give it one of those nubs, like when it's 
Can you imagine if you found a stick that was perfect for this? So yeah, I'm shading this one in a little bit just to see how it'll look. Okay. Um, that looks pretty good for me. Uh, now let's think about this. Where should his hand go? I almost wonder if it should be like on his hip. So over here, if you think about it, it's like spread out like this, obviously turned around. So his thumb is facing into his body. Like this. Let's not get too obsessive over that just yet, because we're going to paint over it. Uh, what other things could we do? How about a scarf for this guy? Oh, we need buttons. Remember, same thing. Imaginary line right here. And a scarf. I'm going to start with the two straight lines and then almost like a smiley face. But the bottom of the head is good enough for us, so it kind of matches that shape. Okay. And then I'm just going to draw like a circle-ish thing and then put two ends of the scarf out. It's almost like a receipt, you know, a shape like that and another one just behind it. See how I'm using overlap? I'm not even drawing some of the details in. Uh, that looks good enough for me. All right, so you got a decent amount of shapes here, some detail locked in. Okay, let's go back to the chill out thing. If I had some scrap paper, I'm gonna write out like how would I plan on writing this thing? But the key thing to think about is not only what line it's on, how tall are your letters? So you might, if you're into like lettering and stuff, so if I have to say chill out, I could do all sorts of letters. I'm gonna try to do kind of like a cursive Okay. And then O U T. Maybe an exclamation point. Okay. Now notice how this midline is where all my lowercase letters and that thing goes up. Now we got to just think if we change that line from straight, turn it like this. You got to be able to practice <laughs> painting or sorry, writing on those curves. Let's try that out here. Okay. Here's my C, H, I, L, L. And then O. Exclamation point. Let's do three. All right, now just a reminder, we're gonna have to paint that, so <laughs> don't worry, it'll come with practice. All right, from here on out, we're actually gonna, what do you think, should we put a sled here? I think we should. Um, just gonna start like, it's almost like a diamond shape because I want it to make it look like it's sitting here. And I'm gonna put some lines that follow the box there. And then I'm gonna eyeball this. There's usually, we're on one of those old school sleds, there's like a round thing at the front. And then two parallel lines underneath there and we'll just put a little curve that. I don't know, that's
that's good enough for now. We can always spice it up. Ooh, you know, we could even add some tracks on the back. And then, yeah, down here we'll think of something when we start painting. All right, so before we bust out the paints, I'm gonna take the extra step of taking some masking tape like this. Kind of being a bad boy because this is an acid-free tape, but you know what? I'm not really worried about it today. But you don't wanna use anything that's super crazy and you don't wanna leave it on there for a long time. You just wanna get right up to the edge. So when you finish, I'm gonna go right outside my line so I don't have to erase that at the end. When you finish, you'll be able to peel off this tape. And you'll have a nice clean boundary after the paint is dry. But like I said, don't leave it on there too long because it'll tear your paper. Sure it's a good seal along the edge. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna just get a mental note. What kind of colors are we gonna have to mix for this? Well, I'm thinking something like red for the scarf or both of them, probably. Um, and instead of using like green for the trees, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use blue as my dominant color here. The one thing I'm gonna just keep in mind is like with gouache, I can paint white on there and it's pretty opaque, meaning it'll cover up other colors. But I try my best to leave things I know are gonna be pure white, like this, uh, what do you call it, the moon. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that pure white because you may find that um, this isn't perfect in covering up any other mistakes. So I'm gonna use this paper plate to mix on. One thing with this gouache is it is kind of chalky. So I'm gonna put this aside real quick and talk a little bit about those. So always gonna need some water. Um, also helpful to have um, paper towels handy to clean your brushes. Uh, and then also a piece of scrap paper. Scrap paper is gonna be helpful for testing out your colors, especially when you don't know what they look like just yet, or when you're mixing them to fit. So my brushes, I'm gonna admit that they're not the cleanest. Uh, sometimes a dirty brush gives you some character, so I'm kinda just Cleaning it up the best I can. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some of our colors. Now these dry pretty quickly. Uh, not gonna use much of the yellow. Let's start with this cyan. Now, if you haven't mixed cyan instead of like pure blue, how's it that I'm gonna make this, it's a pretty warm blue. How am I gonna make it look a little cooler? Well. That's the weird part. I'm gonna use magenta. Okay. All right. I'm gonna use a relatively wide brush to lay in some of these shapes first. And first off, I'm gonna take my blue. I wanna cool it off. So I'm gonna take a little bit of magenta and start mixing that into here. Gonna make it a little more blue in like a purple sense. So push it more towards purple. So this would be more of like what people would think of as like an ultramarine. If you can see that. Um, now the only problem with gouache is it's not very good for like glazing, but it is still important to add a little bit of water. So you just like get a little bit more time to work with and then make sure that you're on like 
a piece of plastic. Like I sometimes I use an old CD to mix my colors on. Um, let's take a look here. Let's try it on the test paper. Okay, that's a nice and cool blue compared to what we started with. Okay, now the other thing is I want to get as much off of here as possible. This stuff, you don't want to waste it, so I'm actually going to be doing some sketching in, so I want some really uh, watery stuff. Okay. If you're doing like pure gouache, I don't know, I'm sure there's probably some other tutorials on how to do this. I'm also going to put a little bit of black in here. Okay, I'm not going to pour out much because I know I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use a little bit of white. Believe it or not, white will dull down most of your colors. But we can also add a little bit of gray, aka a little bit of black, a little bit of white. So here's this right now. I'm going to add some white here. And it loses some power to it. Okay, but it's starting to look a little cooler. That was clearly too much, but. You can see how that, Ooh, that's nice. I need a little black because I'm gonna do some of the background first. See how dark and powerful that is? Wow, I really messed that up, but it's okay. Add a little bit more blue. All right, so what I did is I, put some grayish blue over here. I'm gonna start by filling in my background so I can punch up my foreground. If I don't like it, I can always put it back. Okay, I'm gonna use this color for those trees in the background. Now I'm using a bright brush or one with a hard edge because I wanna get some clean edges here. And I'm gonna add some texture for those trees in the back. Doesn't need to be a hard boundary. You can see how dark this color is, like, probably could have lightened it up, but. Going around the nose, and notice I'm following that line at the base, which is gonna be where the snow ridge ends. And where it meets this tree, I don't really, I'm not really worried about it just yet because I'm gonna go in there, some other stuff. Okay. What this does, since it's gonna be a night scene, is it pushes that background farther back. But since it's mixed with some gray, that color isn't gonna be like right in the front of your mind. It's gonna be something that's like in the background. If you haven't figured it out, the brain is super interested in bright, satisfying colors. So if you give that to it, it's like giving it candy. And in the background, we don't really want the viewer to look at that as much. And look how I'm using those brush strokes to keep things interesting. I want it to look just like a coloring book. Oh, running out of fuel here. I'm gonna get some of the wet <laughs> paint over there. <laughs> with, with watercolor and gouache, you're always controlling how much water you have into your paint. Okay. Okay, but that seems like it's a good shadow color, right? So how about the sky in the background? These are already pretty bright. Believe it or not, like, it's gonna be a relatively light color. So I'm gonna wash this brush, all right? And actually, we're gonna keep, we're gonna to try to do a really light wash here. And I'm gonna to try to use a bigger, even bigger brush like this to fill in some of these other shapes, but much lighter. So let's see if I can get a little bit out of here. I'm gonna add a ton of water to make a wash Take a look. Okay, that's much lighter than our background before. And again, I can always go over it 
with my more opaque paints. That's why I'm going to just go, let's do my background, everything except the moon here. I'm going to even do, oh, let's see how I doubled up on that other part. Keep it moving. Trying to keep it as even as possible. Remember, we're gonna make that hat black anyway, so if there's some overlap, who cares? You know what, I guess I'm just gonna have to paint that moon again. All right, now that I'm thinking about it though, I'm gonna use some more of that, sh that shade just to give some base color to the snow behind me. So I'm even gonna go over those background trees And I'm going to start outlining some of the background snow, almost like the shadow, to make this white part pop out. The difference in color, remember what we call that? It's called contrast. So I'm going to even paint over the sled. Now the reason I'm doing this is like a basic wash of color is because I can always add more with white. Uh, I'm just gonna, see I'm adding some shadow here. Still gonna do some blue here just to make everything pop out. Can you see why that um, tape is gonna come in handy? All right, so we got this nice little background, but the only problem with doing these washes is you're gonna see some of our lines we didn't erase quite nicely, so we can always cover that up with some white paint later. Um, but while I'm at it, I think I might actually lighten up some of these pencil lines. Because who knows? Oh yeah, never mind. I'm gonna wait till it's dry. All right, let's mix it up a little bit. How are we gonna mix this red? Now the problem with this color is that you got um, that magenta is not really red, it's more pinkish. So I'm gonna put some yellow over here, not a lot. And I'm gonna start mixing some red, some classic red here. So I'm gonna start with some magenta over here and just slightly add a tiny bit of yellow. So yellow is going to make that much more red. How do I add, eh, let's say I want to tone it down just a speck. Well, let's try a tiny bit of black. Ooh, look how much I got on there. Just a tiny bit. It's going to push it more towards brown, but we want this to be pretty decent color. If I add too much white, it's going to turn into like a rosy color. We don't want that. So here's my magenta. Add a little bit of yellow. I got a nice red. I'm going to mix a decent amount of this stuff because I got to cover those things almost entirely. Uh, and we'll try it out. Add a little bit of water. So I'll go a little farther. Okay, here we go. 
gonna do, well, I'm gonna get a different brush for that. Nice and sharp brush. You can still see. pencil line underneath, which I'm adding all that <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys, I've been so used to painting with uh, <laughs> the iPad lately, I haven't busted out the paints in a while. Did you just see that? I lost my brush. <laughs> Jeez. Part of the reason you never want to store your brushes in water overnight. Okay, one more time. Notice I'm just doing the, this part. Looking pretty magenta, unfortunately. Always do a second coat. This is why people who do like regular gouache that isn't acrylic, basically if you add another coat, it'll mix with your other one, which can either be awesome or the most annoying thing ever. Now, if you don't have gouache, you can always do this with colored pencils, all these other things. I just figured we'd bust this out. I got the time today, that's for sure. Okay, what am I going to do about those other parts, like the folds? I'm going to add a little bit of blue instead of black. So, with this, let's create some contrast. It's a little bit more violet here. It's like the shadow color. But those of you who've been painting for a while know that if you can avoid to use black, it gives a lot more vibrance to your paintings. And cooler colors are really good at making shadows. Hence the blue background that we just created. You see that depth we just created here? So let's think for a second about our light source. I put it, those shadows on the underside of the scarf so it's kind of coming from over here. That means that the light is on the top of these things. To make them even brighter, let's see if we can do an interesting highlight. We did the shadow. Let's try a highlight. I'm gonna try a technique called dry brush. So first we're gonna have to clean the brush and dry it off. And I think I might even use Kind of a dumpier brush. See how there's like some stuff in there? The reason is I want to create a texture. First, I'm going to create the color. It's going to be more yellow. A little bit more white. And then I'm going to add my magenta. Okay, this is highlight color. It's not going to go for everything, but what I'm going to look for is what's called a dry brush texture. Let's take a look. See this scratchy stuff like that? That's what I want to give it some texture on these parts over here. It's looking a little bit more. I'm going to add some white to this. I want it to be to stick out add some texture to the scarf. I'm gonna put it on the edges here. Oh, that's looking nice. So it's Still has the red underneath, but it's like a scratchy, more fabric-y feel. So it adds some texture to the scarf that's a little bit more reflective. Let's add some more over here. 
trick is, is pick the brush that fits the job, you know. If you need the texture of like a squirrel's tail, do something that looks like a squirrel's tail. And don't always use white, like we have basically like a an orange over here. But as you can see, this stuff's drying out pretty quick. Mm, I'm gonna add a little bit more down here. All right, that's looking pretty nice. All right, how about the snowman? Hey, Sam Danica too, what's up? Here's some more um, stuff we'll go through on the, um, I don't know, maybe we should just put some white in on this snowman just to get that out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna get a good brush to apply that. I'm gonna say, this one was working pretty good. And whenever you do white, you gotta make sure your brush is Pretty clean, aka really clean. But now that I think about it, since we have all these like cool colors in the background, I wanna see if I could almost have the white be infused with a little bit of like warmth. So maybe that orange that's on this brush is gonna help us out. Right. We're gonna need a decent amount of this, but probably not even that much. Okay, give me one second. I'm gonna go change my water. back. There's some clean water. Get one more rinse out of this. And we're going to go in with some white. That's going to cover up some pencil marks and stuff. There we go. So I'm going to get, oh, I'm going to overpaint these lines a little bit. Remember, gouache is really good for having this really rich color once it dries. So you want to smooth out that texture. It is kind of chalky, which is good for covering up some lines. We'll leave a slight amount there. We'll overpaint that line. Because you can always come back in and add more detail with your darker colors. White not always the best at covering up as you can see you'd have to put multiple coats on i have to say this is probably the longest video that i'll have up see i got some red left over in there so be careful See, it was hidden in my brush. This is why you gotta be extra careful when you're doing this. That color likes to hide high up in those bristles. So if you take good care of your brushes, wash them out and don't let them sit, they should be much better.
right, so I got some white in here, which is gonna help me out a little bit later. I'm gonna clean this out. Let that dry for a minute. And we're actually gonna do, let's do some black. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna pick a smaller brush for this one. Let's start off, I'm just gonna fill in some of this stuff. I got a decent amount of black right here, so and a little bit of water to loosen up that paint. Black is pretty powerful, so I don't have to worry about getting too diluted. I'm just gonna really cut in these details outside. This is not a very good brush, I apologize. A couple of straight hairs. Mm, oh well. Now don't worry about overpainting these small details we have in there because you can always change it up. I just want some contrast in there. How's that looking? Look at that stray hair on there. That's bugging me. <laughs> All right. So we got our hat in there. I'm gonna really pick a different brush here and maybe give myself some fresh black paint because that is trash. So whenever I say loosen up the paint, all that means is just like not adding too much water that it's gonna get soupy or, you know, nasty. I just want you to think of it as like, it'll move, especially when you have a small brush like this, it'll just move easily. Now I'm gonna use this, try out this liner brush. See how it's really long, it holds a bunch there. If you're into like hand lettering or script, it's a good one to use. Just gotta make sure it'll flow off of the brush so shape that tip so it's good. Let's try out some of these details like this hand. I'm going to start by laying this in. Ooh, nice. Try that again. Don't try to go too far without reloading here. I guess the middle finger would be longer, right? If it's too hard to see these things overlapping, that's okay, we'll add some highlights later. Hmm. Notice how I'm picking which direction my strokes go. Make it easy on yourself or, you know, rotate the paper. And let's try to add this. Maybe a little thicker, I guess, right? And here we go. 
technically could we have done this with brown? Yeah. But let's do it with black right now. Make it pop out against that background. All right. Let's do some more with this other one. Remember that branch is going to be thicker at one end than the other. It doesn't have to be always straight, but I can't really see too much of my other one here. There's my fingers. I got three. And looks a little creepy, I'm not gonna lie. And let's go for the face details here. I'm gonna start off with one of the clumps. Remember, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle if it's technically a piece of coal, right? Make mine a little bit smaller than I had originally sketched. And let's add some buttons. So these are all of our black details we're going to do for now. I'm going to make sure I clean the brush, keep it good for later. And we're almost at an hour here, so if you guys have been hanging out for a while, thanks again. I'm going to have to drink some iced coffee here. Let's take a look now at what? What should we do now? Um, let's, I guess, go back to the scarf, the smaller one that he's wearing. Let's see if I have a smaller flat brush here. That'll be good. Make sure it's kind of clean. Everything, don't clean your brushes over your, <laughs> your fresh painting. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's get some more of that red going. Looks like we're gonna need some more, but I'm gonna steal some over here, see if we can. All right, so there was some blue in there, but I think this is gonna be enough to get us through. This one's gonna be a little darker. I'm gonna add some yellow, see what happens. Getting kind of a mauve, uh, maybe a brown. I guess we can add a little bit more magenta. All right, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna do a fresh one over here. That looks a little bit better. Add a little bit more yellow. Even a little white. Okay, it's gonna be good for now. I'm gonna lay in some of the details there. And once you paint on, you'll notice that the texture of the paint is a little bit different and it's like chalky. So sometimes you gotta loosen up that paint even more, especially if you want a clean line. Not the best brush either. I'm gonna have to ask for new brushes for Christmas. I'm 
to give a little bit of thickness to that on the edge there. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just don't want it to look like a choker or something. And we'll add some more for the knot. Okay, I'm actually going to, I'll add the second one. I gotta loosen up the paint, get it in those crevices. We'll add some detail to that later when it dries. For my paint stroke, I'm gonna do an over the top one, give it some direction and texture. All right, while we have this uh, magenta fresh out, let's do the nose, but we gotta mix up some orange So I'm going to make sure my lining detail brush is all clean. I'm going to start with some fresh yellow. It's always frustrating, like, using too much paint. You very rarely need much. We're going to use this yellow again to make a brown for this sled, too. All right, here we go. Um, start with some yellow. Mix it over here. I'm going to add some red slowly. What do you think? That looks pretty orange. Add a tiny bit of water. Make sure that flows when we paint it on. And then we'll turn that into a brown we can use for later. All right, now the cool thing about the orange against the blue is it's an opposite color, so it's going to stick out. Almost looks electric. I'm even going to add a little bit of this orange into our scarf I made earlier. down so you can see a little bit better here. Okay, we better wrap this up. It's over an hour. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's do um, that brown from the sled because we also need some of the magenta. All right, so I'm going to use a little bit A little bit bigger brush and then we're going to create that same orange a little magenta so nice and warm color but then I'm going to add a tiny bit of gray so I'm going to mix some black some white some gray. I'm also going to put a little bit of blue in there. Okay, and I'm going to then put this all to the side. Let me move this for a second. Okay, there's my gray. I'm going to take this orange. Hmm, there's a brown. I want it to be a little bit more yellow. 
a little bit more red. Dang it. So that's going to be at the base of it. Eh. There it is. As you can see, my color mixing skills are still developing, as they should be. I'm just going to add that to some white. A little bit of orange to that. And I'm going to make an option that's even brighter. Okay. Those are two browns I can deal with. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Notice how I'm just filling this in. I'm gonna add some detail later. Best put this thing in. I'm rushing now, but hey, it's all right. Well, now you know how long it takes to make these pieces. <laughs> all right, let's make those red. Um, rails for the thing. Mixing some red. And maybe I'll add a little bit of this gray to it just to make it a little darker. Using that same color just to add some depth. Looks all right. We can add some shadows under there later. All right. And, hmm. Let's see. We're gonna have to do our lettering. We do need to make some shadow on the outside here to make it look a little rounder. Oh yeah, and we can add some details on the hat here as well. Um, we'll do the lettering last. Let's start adding some shape with some colors. Now there's two ways to do this. You can glaze it on using like a transparent wash, which I do enjoy doing. Let's try that out first. I'm gonna take some blue. Okay, you're not gonna need much. You just need some water. And sometimes just take like something else to make it, knock it down a little bit, like make it a little more gray. But I really, really need to dilute this out. So something like this, that's all the pigment on the brush. Start slow right there. And I'm gonna use my testing sheet. I don't want it to be too intense. That looks pretty good for me. So first I'm gonna create a shadow under the brim of this hat. Now 
if you were using regular gouache, this would not work. It would basically just take <laughs> all of your hard work and erase it. That white would be reactivated. Okay. But if you're painting on top of paint, it's a little bit different than painting on the paper. The paper will suck up the stuff and then you're gonna end up with stuff like over here. But here, the paint is not sucking it up. So I'm adding these shadows to make it look like these are round. So you can add some more detail here. Don't let it pool up too much. So we're slowly building this up. Make it look like a shadow. This isn't the best brush to be doing it with, I'll be honest. There's too much line to it. But it's good for adding detail, like say around that ball. And try a different brush, see if I can work it in a little bit. Test it out. Taking away a little bit of the other stuff. So I'm gonna cool it for a minute. Let that dry. But I'm gonna get a different brush, maybe this one, to add some shadows and wash. Uh, same thing, but I'm gonna be a little bit more deliberate. So let's add some shadow here behind Now blue is great for shadows. Again, I'm not using black anywhere here. I want these to be really easy. I guess I'm gonna have to repaint our hand over there, but that's okay. And I'm gonna do some more shadowing back here. Shadow this side of the tree. Some shadow underneath it. A little bit of shape to that hill. also have to have a shadow for the scarf that's blowing in the wind, right? So let's take care of that now. Kind of want to get this in one shot so it's nice and smooth. I'm just going to make like a I'm going to go over it one more time. Very subtle, but it should get a little darker where it's closer. That makes it pop up much more, right? It's flowing in the wind. All right, and then I think our sled seems pretty dry. I'm gonna add some shadow underneath that. I think 
things are looking pretty good. While I'm thinking of it, let's add the moon so that my white paint doesn't dry out before I forget. Remember to clean that brush for white. Might take a few coats to get that thing really Now while I have this white, I'm going to add some snow to this tree, just with some texture. Touch that up when we're done. Or the texture of the brush, just like when we did on the scarf, can add some really Great things. Now I'm adding white on the side of this because I'm thinking that the moon is catching some of the reflection there. And then we'll add some dark when we get a chance. That same thing here. Adding some texture to that tree that'll make it pop. Now, how about the black part here? Let's add some water to our white. I'm gonna do kind of a glaze, but it's a little pink because I had some stuff on here. Let's look how, yeah. Let's add it so the moonlight comes over here. Kind of adding, let's show some folds in the fabric. I'm gonna stop it right about there show the difference where the brim is. So I'm not super worried about these details, but, you know. Now with my white glaze here, I could also do things like, and a little bit, gonna be crazy looking. Yeah, I'm adding a couple highlights on my sled. All right, just to add some texture. And then I wanna show some fresh snow like right in front of it so it's like sticking out from that blue maybe I'm gonna go like right here Almost like the reflection of the moon here on that snow. Alright, now I figured it out that shadow helps us out, right? It fills this in. I can just sign it down here. Still gonna add a little bit of uh blue with some white to it in the corners here, because I think that's what's holding us back, is this wash, okay? Because it's just not... blue enough. Remember, we want this to pop when we look at it, so don't be afraid to use some color. Hmm. We'll add 
add some shadow. And blue, some white. Oh, here's the shadow of the tree. I'm gonna darken up this back part here. I'm gonna add some white. Back on that outer edge. Let's pour some more white. That's black. I'm going to add some micro highlights here on the stick. Mm, that's a little bit much. Maybe just here. Just to make that more 3D. Got to go back in with the black, I think. And then we'll finish it up with the chill out lettering. <laughs> All right, let's go back in, touch up the blacks, and we'll be good. Wow, this is definitely the longest one I've ever done. Looking pretty good. I'm gonna add a little bit of black here. A little bit much. Maybe should have held off on that. But it does add a little bit of punch. All right. So what do you say? Should we do white lettering? I think that's gonna stick out the most. All right. And clean this up. It'll be really important that I use the liner brush here and make sure it's very clean. Might have to do two coats because like I said, that white doesn't uh, always clean up the best. Just make sure. Okay. Let's 
set up our white. Now I'm gonna use some water to thin this thing out. Make sure I'm getting enough on my brush. Make sure I get all of it here. Hmm, don't wanna overload it either, so I'm twisting my brush to get some of it off. And I'll be honest, this is gonna be a little tough, but we'll see what happens. I can loosely see where I started. Looks pretty good. Might be able to do it without any two coats. Okay. Just trying to even out some of these lines here. Ooh, all right, I can stop holding my breath. A little stressed out. And I think we're just gonna do one exclamation. Dot this eye, and we're all done. <laughs> all right. Well, those of you who stuck with this, obviously we can always add more and more to all these things, but I think this is pretty good. I think the next step is going to be just to maybe sign this thing. Um, might do it in pencil. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do a little That's gonna be it. We'll just do 2018. I think that's gonna be just perfect. All right, there's snow day sketching. More than a sketch, that's a, dang, 90 minutes. All right, here I'm gonna carefully pull some of these uh, pieces off. Ooh. Let's see. Take your time when you're pulling these things off. You don't want to tear the paper. Ooh, now that's pretty 
beginning of Mr. ASMR. Hey, hey, it's Mr. ASMR. Satisfying bids. Ooh, that's a clean edge there. Ooh, I want to say yeet to that. pretty pumped about how this turned out. Well, if you guys enjoyed this, I know it's kind of long, but I figure, hey, if we're going to be snowed in, might as well. Oh, yeah, that's nice and smooth right there. Look at that. Might as well make the most of it. Now that pretty sweet so if you guys enjoyed this uh, be sure to comment below um, this is my first main like long live cast I'd love to do more uh, if you have suggestions or how I could improve the feed please let me know I just figured this is a great way for you to see me working from start to finish on something um, and you could even tune this thing up um, especially if you have digital tools but uh, that's about it guys so I appreciate you following along Hopefully you guys stay safe and warm if you're in Chicago, um, but otherwise, see you next time.